Good morning, folks. As you can see, we've got blank, brightless, earth-facing, heliographic longitudes, but we've still got a ton of news and six extra minutes tacked on at the end of this video to help you understand one of them. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star. Without sunspots facing Earth, the solar flaring is flatlined here in the X-ray spectrum. The filaments have also managed to remain stable except for, once again, the departing limb where the filaments are jumping, and that's as a large one begins to enter the Earth-facing disk top left. The southern coronal hole is departing now, having its solar wind impact Earth about 24 hours later than expected. The rise in purple, plasma speed, hasn't even hit 400 kilometers per second yet. That is a weak stream and we'll wait for some intensification today and we'll already look ahead to the next one coming in on the north. That's ahead of the plasma filament you saw in the red 304 angstrom view. Top stories begin at Greenland where new data probing beneath the surface is allowing far greater ability to map the region. They have indeed applied these methods to almost the entire nation. For website members who remember our volcano discussion, it turns out we did not describe how bad it could be. Apparently, the changes we're seeing in the oceans will make it more difficult for them to mitigate the effects of large volcanic eruptions, which means the cooling effect will be greatly amplified. Speaking of which, earthquakes continue to signal magma movement into the eruption chambers of Icelandic volcanoes. If you want to know what a scared tourism industry sounds like, read the description of the alert on RSOE. Five to go, don't fall asleep yet. In case you weren't sure how complicated cosmic ray cloud forcing is, you can read this paper, or you can try. This is one of the more difficult analyses of the science. An incredible paper is linked as well describing major problems in standard physics and how the quantum field theory can solve them all. It's also fun to watch recounts of historic geniuses rip apart things scientists believe today. NASA has analyzed atmospheric rivers and found them to be responsible for 22% of the water flowing across the surface land. Disruptions to them are likely to cause future flood and drought changes by 80 to 90%. We had a terrific article out describing how supernova likely didn't cause mass extinctions in the past and how the photobiological effects would be minimalized anywhere beyond 50 parsecs. Not sure if this accounts for magnetic field changes of Earth, however top story is about the eruptive mechanism of solar flares. They are describing how magnetic energy fails to spread out in equilibrium, but instead remains focused on the eruptive region until destabilization, release, and explosion. They call the results of their study surprising and unexpected, but I would argue that they might be perfectly logical. At the end of this video, after the wind maps and shots of our star to close, we've tacked on the six-minute first deeper look episode ever on magnetic helicity and the Earth spot connection. Stick around. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got those wind wind maps, shots of our star to close, and that first deeper look episode ever. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.
One of the best ways we can tell that sunspots are similar to earthly formations is how they spin. An alpha spot will often spin just like a hurricane. Big sunspots, like big storms on Earth, move around, strengthen, weaken. Now, let's take a closer look at the magnetic fields of a sunspot, as visualized by the U.S. Navy. In addition to seeing how oppositely polarized sunspots are connected magnetically, there is rotation of the fields, just like we see rotation around the pressure cells of Earth, although this honestly looks more like a tightly wound tropical storm. Given that we know solar flares result from these interacting magnetic fields, and that Earth's version of a solar flare, the terrestrial gamma flash, runs up Earth's magnetic field lines, you should begin to be able to imagine just how similar these processes are. The Scientific Visualization Studio has shown findings from SOHO's MDI instrument, a sonogram of the temperature flows beneath the sunspot. The notion of air mass lifting over another air mass comes to mind when seeing the region below the spot. Now, let's come back and take a look at how strong earth storms work, powerful low here south of Africa. At ground level, we see the wind pulling into the center. Then, as we come up through the cloud layers, the spin is maintained, but now the wind is beginning to push outward from the center. And that continues. Using helioseismology from the MDI, we see the same basic thing in the layers beneath sunspots, coming in one layer and pushing outward in the others. We also see the vortex flows like we see on Earth, coming in at one layer, pushing out at another. What exact conclusion should be made from these animations? Probably none. Only your recognition that the Earth and Sun act alike at every turn. Uh, what I found incredible was the fact that it almost inverted, indistinguishable from the Earth wind map, the, the, these fluid motions that they show. Yeah. I mean, if you notice the, uh, the, uh, the uh, convergent, we will call them convergent lines on Earth, see that those are in the higher layer, whereas on the Earth wind map, they're closer to those convergent line type pictures are closer to the ground. Oh, absolutely. You know? I noticed that as well. I also noticed that um, with those so flows... Those convergent lines are even there. I mean, identical. Well, yeah. The interesting I, thing I, is those, the ones you're talking about, take place below the surface. So, um, it's interesting. If you uh, the the ones that are converging or basically coming in, sucking in, are the ones closest to the surface. But as you get deeper, that's when it starts to push out. But when you're on Earth and you're looking at the wind map, instead of going underground, you're looking above into the atmosphere. It was the same when we saw the temperature differentials uh, underneath the sunspot as well. That's the kind of thing where, you know, air mass is interacting, there can be lift, one can go over another, they can interact. That's the kind of thing that happens in the atmosphere. They're showing that this is actually happening beneath the sunspot, which which I find really interesting. Yeah, especially when they say this is beneath the surface of the sun. Yeah. You know, this almost shows that the sun has its own atmosphere, dense atmosphere. Billy, in your magnetohydrodynamics experiments, is, does that same thing happen? I mean, we can see that, you know, the different sides of the uh, electricity are making them spin opposite directions. Um, the one that is, I wonder if we could tell whether the one that looks like it's churning inward at the surface is actually pushing outward down at the base of the uh down at the base of the probe and at the one where it looks like it's pushing out from the top of it is actually sucking in down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So that's very yeah, interesting. Yeah, the magnetodynamic test, I did show that, you know, I did one in, uh, in water with some corrosion from a plate, you know, the corrosion was in the water and then I did one with the uh, uh, fluorescent uh, ink in the water and yeah, it's definitely a, a, a the cones themselves don't appear to be inverted, but the flow pattern in the cones are definitely, you can see lifting material, uh, water being drawn up in one and being kind of pushed down in the other. Yeah. 
That's fascinating. Well, we'll have to find some more interesting ways to test this. I think for now we can pretty much say that uh, every single one of those animations that we found, and what's interesting is the magnetic fields in the sunspot is from 1999. The other ones are all from 2001. Uh, so, you know, that's a long time ago, but uh, I think all these animations all show some of the things that we are now talking about here 12, 13 years later, which um, is very interesting. And you kind of find it hard to believe that the folks don't realize what they're looking at. You got to think that you got to think that they probably recognize this connection.